what's up guys welcome back and check us out look at what we've got going on this morning they didn't tighten it but losing your coolant could have and it seems how it backfired the engine backfired because it got so hot it could be later damaged later on down the road then all right guys some time check today's monday june 29th uh, we weren't able to deal with this over the weekend so i'm telling you about it now friday dropped it off for a transmission coolant replace front brake pads and picked it up saturday anyways i'm driving to work on saturday just a couple hours after picking the truck up going down this hallway and i feel the truck backfire a couple times uh, the first thing i thought was okay maybe we just you know we just had these fluids changed whatever it might just possibly be normal uh get here to work go to put the truck into reverse. It doesn't want to go into reverse. Get out and obviously you guys can see from the B-roll, I got transmission fluid everywhere. Weston was filming Guggen Week, so the truck had to sit here through the weekend because the shop was closed. So here we are Monday morning, bright and early, getting it taken care of. About to get it on the tow truck, back over to the shop, figure out what the heck's going on with it. Well guys, the tow driver just got here. We put the truck in neutral, and as soon as we started moving it, it immediately started leaking fluid again. We didn't turn it on just to scoot it over out of the way to get a better positioning for the tow truck. The plug is out. Is, that, no, is that the deal? Yeah, there's no plug in the, in the transmission pan. Golly. Yeah. <laughs> Alright guys, we're on our way to the shop. We're following the tow truck. It was kind of funny, we ran into Officer Bo Gacky. Uh We used to see him all the time when we were parking cars, valeting uh, before we got furloughed. Shout out to him, he was making sure our truck wasn't getting stolen. Because uh, apparently there's tow trucks that are just kind of fly by night and they just go ahead and take some cars from the shop, it sounds like. Anyways, we're trying to see how much damage the truck is dealing with here because it was running hot, it backfired on Devin, didn't want to shift out of gear, and it's out of transmission fluid 100%. That's what we went to go get taken care of. It's just like 74,000 miles, and we bought it like pretty much new, never had any issues with this truck. So we're just gonna see what they have to say, see if we can't get things taken care of, and we're gonna take you guys along for the ride. We'll see you there. All right, y'all, we got the truck dropped off. They went ahead and uh, they told us there was no transmission fluid plug on the thing. It was just all over the place. So we are going to see what they've got to say once they get her all refilled and take her for a little test drive. Not going to bash the place, you know, probably an honest mistake. We'll see what happens, man. But Devin and I are now, we are now out here for breakfast. We're going to grab us a little bite to eat and then get on with the rest of today. Might do some fishing later. Stick around, man. So guys, we went back to the spot, they called us up, they said it runs just as it did beforehand. Thank goodness, because we were pretty worried after Devin said it was like really chugging on the highway, wouldn't shift out of gear, and uh, a few other things. And there still could be some long-term side effects. Uh, they were fantastic about it. They said, you know what, just call back if anything happens. Anyways, now we're on our way back home, and I think I'm gonna turn this into, our plan originally was to take the boat out today. Well, it's already 5 p.m., we'd have to go get it, drive to the lake, it's not gonna happen and the winds are insane. I mean, it's like 20 mile an hour plus winds today, so even bank fishing is gonna be less than ideal. So what we might do is just cover a little bit of a gear update back at home in the garage. We'll cover uh, a little bit of our tackle wall, a little rod and reel update. Since some things have changed since our last rod and reel arsenal, uh, primarily Guggen prototype rods, we're gonna talk to you about that here in just a second. Let's get to the house. Well, actually, turns out the old STI needs some fuel. 20 MPGs, that's about twice as much as the Tundra gets. Okay, we're back. Just put on the old mic. Let's get outside. We have a new bag of Guggen apparel that I'm probably not supposed to show you, so I will leave that there. Carl's Bait and Tackle just hooked us up with this month's order of some goodies. We'll cover that. Let's go ahead and get outside. <laughs> yeah, and Devin took the truck through a car wash because it had transmission fluid all over from front to back. And uh, now she's cleaning off the windshield with glass wipes because apparently the little car wash didn't do a good job on the windshield. Okay, so in the Carl's box, this is like, we just made a light order. In fact, I think this is uh, one of two parts. So we got some more death stalkers. We've been loving the live scope and we're talking about using it more for like crappie and stuff of that nature. So we have some more death stalkers in different colors. We also got some more jackhammers just cause I've been throwing the chatter baits and ever since throwing the jackhammers, they seem pretty decent color match blades, yada, yada. And then we got a bunch of hooks since we've got uh, this new little tackle box up here. 
We've got this new ice box for the boat, which is a fairly large size. So I wanted to make sure we've got a little bit of hooks to not only go on the boat, but also still be available for the bank fishing. And then we got some more tungsten nail weights. In fact, the last ones were not tungsten. So these look way smaller, but these are gonna be for uh, Nico rigs. We're gonna put those on the lunker logs and use those. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna give you guys the full rundown. I mean, this is one of the first rods we ever got. This is a Luz uh, Hank Parker Signature Series, 40 bucks from Walmart, seven foot medium heavy. It is uh, a fantastic rod for the price. Then we've got uh, one of our Powells that we have kind of decommissioned since getting some of those Guggen prototypes because we don't need a thousand rods. So we've got a couple spinning combos. This is just some random, probably like Walmart purchase right here. Uh, a couple like two piece rods for catfish. But then we've also got this one right here. This is a shorter one. It's called the Big Cat and we actually like it, but it's got the, a pen reel that we had purchased for some uh, saltwater work whenever we travel. Now these two, these are brand new. You guys have only seen this on the series with Lunkers whenever we went up north to Wisconsin and fished Door County with uh, Spencer. We have two Stratic CI4 reels. These things are brand spanking new. This is the 2500 I know because it's got this handle here. Subi's a little loud, better let that go by. Now this is the 3000 and you can tell because it has that larger handle. Baby, turn that thing off. And those reels are paired up with two medium light rods. This is a seven, seven, 13 fishing Omen Green spinning setup. This thing is for throwing some light stuff around. It's recommended for lure weights, 1 16th of an ounce to five sixteenths of an ounce. Then we've got this guy right here. This actually is the rod that pairs with the CI4 Plus. It is the Zodius, the Shimano Zodius rod. And this is a seven foot three inch medium light plus. This one is rated for one eighth to half ounce baits. We're gonna get to the good stuff, man. Just hold on one second. We got tons of stuff to show you, but uh, we gotta get through this first. $5 Walmart rod we have used for challenges, plus a couple micro rods that we have purchased for like some trout and different challenges, things of that nature. Now let's take you over to our well-organized tackle wall. We got a Carl's box full of some goodies that I need to give away. Well, the sunscreen we use, but there's a bunch of baits in here. We got a few MTB boxes. This one's got some small mouth lures in it. We have our big bait box, a handful of swim baits that we need to cover in our swim bait collection video that is still uh, needing to be filmed uh, partially and way past overdue. Another big bait box. We have our new ice box that we need to fill up with terminal for the boat. Now moving on to where we keep most of our rod and reels for quick access because we use them all the time is literally just right here in the corner of the garage so we can put them up easily at the end of the day of filming and get to editing or we can just grab them when we're on the go. We've also got money bags full of the good stuff. I mean, we got some saucy swimmers, some Mondo worms, some lunker logs. We got one filled with some big soft plastic swim baits. You know, we've got the citizens. You can never really have enough money bags. It really helps keep your plastic sorted. And we just kind of grab one whenever we go hit the banks or put them all on the boat whenever we take her out. We have the new Catch Co Yodo worms that you guys saw me slay in a couple previous videos now with the Red Gills bag with the boomerang tool from Catch Co. You guys know that you can save 30% on all your accessories like this at Carl's Bait and Tackle. And I'm telling you what, these are invaluable cut straight through blade yeah like it's got two blades so that's what I meant to say cut straight through braid mono fluoro you name it she gets the job done and now ladies and gents the rod and reels let's just go ahead grab these things and set them out on the floor check out the updated lineup let's give this thing the full rigmarole because we've got a lot of new things since that last arsenal video and we are just gonna skim through this stuff so you guys know we're rocking and then we can get into some more sick fishing content on a day where it's not quite like this 100 degrees and unbelievably windy go ahead and subscribe for that man turn the notifications bell on or you gonna miss it ah first you'll notice uh, we don't have line on a couple things here we have a Guggen Squad prototype right here. This is a cranking rod, I would say. This is probably a 6'9 uh, or a 7 foot right here with the Corrado K, about 15 pound Guggen Squad fluorocarbon that is heavily bird's nested under there. I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna need to sort that out here in just a minute. We also have a spinning rod. This one is probably a, this is a 7 foot medium heavy. We've got that uh, very affordable Shimano Sienna reel. I mean, she ain't the smoothest thing out there, but for $29.99 to get into a Shimano and just have something reliable to catch you some fishies, this is the juice right here. Speaking of the juice, we've got a Lunker Log Nico rigged with those weights I just showed you uh, right there. We're rocking 15 or 20 pound braid to a uh, eight pound fluoro leader on that, just doing some light work. Here we've got another Guggen Squad prototype, you guys. And by prototype, I mean, these were some of the early prototypes. They were just focused on like the weight, the balance, the materials, things of that nature. So if uh, if they don't look like what you've been seeing in some of the videos lately, just know that these were the, the early guys. So seven foot medium heavy paired with the Shimano Scorpion. Love this reel. I've gotten so many questions over this reel. I mean, she's, she's a beaut. 
moving on. This is either a 7.2 or maybe like a 7.3. This one's getting a little bit heavier. This is probably still a medium heavy rating right here. Guggen Squad prototype again. I love the little twist deal. I don't know how the focus is looking right now, but I love that click. Let me get it close to the mic. I think I had this set up for frogs and some top water use actually. Uh, a longer rod is a little bit tougher for me to walk those frogs with, so this was perfect. I've got the probably 30 pound braid on here, and this is the SLX DC reel, which recently, you guys pointed out in an Instagram post, is missing the tension knob. So I gotta figure out how to get another one. It's kinda set right for almost everything I've been throwing, but uh, yeah, we need to get that replaced. Got a little T-rig on here now just cause I was working through some thick lily pads the other day and wanted to untie the buzz bait cause I didn't have many other options as far as what to put on. So that's that. We have the Tranks. This is the Tranks 400 with the power handle. This thing does not mess around. We bought this to not only use for bass but other species when we go on vacation again and get some salt water use out of this thing. It is also fantastic for Instagram pictures. You guys love the way this reel looks. Some of you hate it, either way. I dig it. We've got a very cheap and affordable. So literally this 13 fishing defy black swim bait rod, eight foot heavy. I mean, for, we got it for 40 bucks used. I think they sell for 80 new. They're just very cheap for a swim bait setup. Some would say that is not the most ideal pairing, but we, we're just, we don't care. Look, if I had to say the best three reels like looking, I would say this Tranks 200, which I'm about to tell you about, just cause the contrast with that black and silver, it looks so clean. And the Scorpion, just cause it's so unique. No one has it. You gotta get it imported. So delectable. And then the Scorpion, which we have torn to bits and now needs a service. This is the Scorpion DC and that is the Scorpion MGL. Where were we? Devon swim bait setup. This is a dream swim bait setup right here. Tranks 200 HG, got that smaller handle. It is a seven two to one gear ratio. If you guys are unfamiliar with gear ratios and stressing out about all this stuff, every reel is different. What seven two to one represents is seven and essentially 7.2 full spins of the spool for every full turn of the handle. Seven two to one. So now if you have like an eight, to one, you'd be getting eight full turns. If you've got like a 6.5 to one, you'd be getting six and a half turns per full turn of the handle. Hopefully that's making sense to you guys. Now, how much line you're bringing in doesn't vary that much. Let's say something in the six, seven and eight range, right? They might vary between like, you know, 29 inches and 31 inches and 33 inches of line brought in per full turn of the handle. It just all varies reel to reel. So you're gonna have to check out the specs. I like stuff in the mid range, something like that seven, two to one gear ratio is fantastic for just about anything, guys. Almost an eight foot. This is a heavy action mojo bass rod by St. Croix. It is our first ever St. Croix. I've thrown it around a bit, just enough to know that the thing is freaking sweet. The sensitivity is over the top. The color, it's got like this little purple hue, like in the sunlight, it just looks it just looks nice. It's got a very long handle. Look, look at the handle on that uh, eight foot defy. You get a little bit more out of that 710 St. Croix. So I really like those long handles so you can really fling those big baits. And this thing is rated for one to four ounce baits. So you you can really chunk out the big stuff. Defy Black Rod is actually rated for up to eight ounce lures. Now we got the reel that everyone spends way too much money on just because they want to have the best of the best and we got that Metanium DC. Yes, there's more expensive reels out there, but this thing, you get what you pay for. And I've probably spent $500 in cheap reels that now no longer work. So this one will outlast them. There's something unique about this lineup here. Everything is Shimano. Why? I'd rather pay a little extra up front when it comes to some of these reels than pay down the road because we got five, six, eight just sitting on the shelves here. Another Guggen Squad prototype to go with this. I believe it's 17 pound fluoro carbon. What we have right here is 20 pound fluoro on Devon's and then we have 25 pound fluoro on the big rig. Can you guys tell I'm all over the place yet? I think we've talked about five different combos in different orders because I didn't cover them all specifically the first time around. It's just a Weston Smith thing also, <laughs> get used to it. Next we have got an SLX XT reel with about 15 pound floral carbon. And this is one of my Powell rods. This is actually a 7.6 mag medium fast, which I really prefer for almost all bottom baits. I really like those longer rods for your jigs, Texas rigs, things of that nature. And then we got a 7.3, which is the one over here on the shelf. And that has been more for moving baits and stuff like that. So the last combo over here, we have got the Corrado DC. This one is on that 7.6 heavy or mag medium heavy, and it has got the buzz bait on there. Little top water action. This is 50 pound Guggen Squad braided line. And uh, yeah, love. I mean, again, just love the feel. Every one of these rods has got cork on it. I like the look. The feel is fantastic. They start to discolor after a while, but that look gets you when they're brand new, man. Nothing quite like a little bit of cork right there on the rod. So that has been an update on our rods and reels. I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing edited and hopefully post it at a reasonable time and we'll catch you on tomorrow's upload, man. Subscribe for more. We'll see you then. <gasps>